it's easy to see football at Pottstown High School is a team sport. First play, first play is going to be power out right, 36 belly. Everything has to line up just right. right on one on one, ready. For the perfect play, like a much needed touchdown during a homecoming game. <laughs> Marvin, let's go, Marvin. Marvin Pearson was the guy who made the touchdown that night. That's cool. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. How you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm hanging out. Okay. You hanging out with him? Yeah, what's up, Marvin? Yo, what's up, bro? Right He's clearly a star, well loved by his fellow students. That's easy to see. I've never seen him in a bad mood. You know my athleticism is off the charts. What you don't see at first is that Marvin can't see. Marvin lost his sight at 10 years old. That's the only time I ever cried. But he says what frustrated him and mentally helped me mature. Drove him. <laughs> when Marvin wanted to play football, the coach signed him up. Chilling? Yeah, I'm chilling. You chilling? Yeah, bro. His teammates embraced it, embraced him. Which leads us to the big moment, the homecoming game. Things weren't going too well for Pottstown. They were down 48 to zero when the rival coach across the field had an idea. He said, "Listen, you know, um, you know, if you want to give Marvin that opportunity to run the football." Um, you know, we, we, would, we would love to be a part of that. As soon as I like, got past our offensive lineman, I just exploded. This could be the end to our story, a fairy tale touchdown for the guy who'd never had one before. But Marvin said he wasn't sure he wanted that moment. I'm sure people are going to remember me as, remember me as a blind person playing football, but I want to be remembered as a football player playing football. But that night his coach reminded him, but I said, you know, Marvin, I think this is a, uh, a sign of respect. Maybe it wasn't the guys who were doing it for him, but instead their way of thanking Marvin for what he does for them. I look at him more as a leader. And he's always, like, on the side cheering us on. He has a vision his whole team looks up to. This ain't just any ordinary football team. This is, you know, this is, this is a family. That's the only way to put it. And just like that, in football, everything lines up. In Pottstown, Joy Howe, 69 News. Confusion, pain, frustration. Makes people depressed. Makes people want to die. Anthea Velez's mother, Cynthia, wants to stop her daughter from being tormented by bullies. Upset me very much. Like, very, very, very angry and made me cry because I knew what it was to be bullied as a child. And she knows all too well where the constant torture can lead. She's known several people who committed suicide because of bullying. And when she was the same age as Anthea, she tried to kill herself for that very reason. At 16, um, I found a bunch of my mom's pills and um, I took them. Cynthia carried the effects of bullying into her adult life and tried to commit suicide again. That's her past. Now her future is to make sure her children never feel that pain. Cynthia worries for Anthea more than the rest of her kids. Anthea says she has been bullied for years, but since she decided to let the world know she's transgender, things have gotten a lot worse. You don't, you don't want to come out when everybody is bullying you because they think you're gay. Imagine if you're transgender, you know. Parents need to educate their kids. They're still human beings. They still have feelings. Anthea says just because she's different doesn't mean she deserves to be punched or fear for her life. So she focuses on strength and empowerment to overcome the negativity. And she wants other kids to know if she can do it, they can too. Love yourself. Know that you are good, like you're great. Bigger things are coming for you. Wow, she's even, she's Debbie Stoner is a licensed professional counselor for kids and says that's exactly what she teaches children to combat bullying. Personal power is key. And that's they can control their thoughts, their feelings and their behaviors. Once children learn that, they feel good about themselves and understand it's the bully with the insecurity problems. She says the mentality of a bully is to get to them before they get to me. Stoner treats a little girl who picks on other kids. So that anxiety from being a little bit different and from worrying about not being as good 
causes her to cope by striking out, by being aggressive, by putting someone else down so she can feel a little bit taller and more powerful. She says when the child knows the bully feels this way, they don't take their actions personally anymore. This technique worked for 13-year-old Marshall Figueroa. They like stop bothering me. Marshall was scared when several girls at school were relentlessly attacking him and threatening to have their brothers beat him up. She put her hands on me and the other one threatened me and she filled my lunchbox up with water and like threw it at me. So he told his parents. His mom, Ray Gonzalez, felt helpless and furious and went to the school until something was done. When is enough enough? My son is getting physically harmed. He's getting mentally harmed. When are you going to step in and say, all right, this is enough? Are you going to wait till he kills himself? Because that's what kids are doing these days. The school took action and Ray set up her own plan and advice for her son as a backup to fix the situation. It is a place yeah. so you don't go where ideas of all kinds come to life. It has to be very precise. It's a place where you can make almost anything. Tucked away on the third floor at Northampton Community College in Bethlehem, Jeff Berner oversees what's called the Fab Lab. And it's pushing the top down on that angle. And pulling. An open access space encouraging the makers and inventors of the world to use everything from 3D printing to wood shop. We're changing lives and we're doing it mostly with the youth. And Jeff says the ideas that become a reality in this lab could very well change the world. And you can bet the White House is even listening. They reached out to me. That's what, that was what was so really amazing about it. From his lab in Bethlehem to Washington, D.C., Berner says he was invited by the president so the government could learn more about how they could support spaces like these. Because Berner says the next best invention uh, is going to come jobs. It's going to come the next best thing. It's going to be just a lot of innovations. Why not? Where else can you do this? Monique McCants is making a guitar here, learning the craft and bringing her ideas to life. It's just a resource for anyone who, who would like to um, make it, I don't know, make it a reality for themselves. You know, that's the thing. We're not concentrating on, on a program of, of needless information. We're just giving people the information they need to, to achieve their goal. In innovative concepts, Burner hopes will take off elsewhere. In Bethlehem, Kyle Rogers, 69 News.